welcome to another episode of commentator kaku and this is the 100th episode of my channel and if you know some maths 2.84 subs per video is definitely not good however leaving that uh, thing entirely aside let us concentrate on this video in this video i have collaborated with shubham to bring you the second episode of the series making rotation easy so in this video i am solving a sum of rotational mechanics in relation to the three points which i stated in shubham's video video so if you haven't seen that video go first check it out otherwise you will not be able to understand many of the points which i'll be saying over here now these amount of information should be sufficient to make you capable to handle almost any question of rotational mechanics especially for neat i am not expecting them to go above this level okay so let's practice a few questions and see how it goes so here is the question uh, by the way while solving this question i'll give you another tip but it would be at the end of this question okay uh, a tip okay i'll i'll give that at the end of the question so if you want you can pause uh, or you can just read the question along with me a cylindrical body of radius r is kept stationary on a flat horizontal surface this one a rod leans against the body inclined at an angle theta with the horizontal this one the left end of the rod slides to the left on the floor with a constant velocity v the angular sp uh, speed of the rod is the angular velocity of the rod is so let's concentrate on the diagram by the way uh, one thing which you are free to do is you are free to draw on the diagram in your question paper nobody will ask you i guess need this year would be offline right so you would be given question paper so if you want you can draw on the diagram but it's uh, it varies on people so we are we have to find the angular velocity of this uh, of this rod right so for uh, finding the angular velocity let us take a point let us take a uh, point about which we can find the angular velocity one thing which uh, you need to realize is that the angular velocity of this rod here 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 all of the points would be same right if you are checking the angular velocity anywhere in the rod the angular velocity of the rod would be same why because suppose the rod is like this now if you are checking the ro uh, rod's angular velocity about this point or this point when the rod would be like this when the rod will become vertical it will take the same same time for uh, both the points right so what is angular velocity angular velocity is d theta by dt so if you have the same change in angle by the same change in time the angular velocity will obviously be same for both right so one thing which you need to keep in mind is that the angular velocity is same for all the point it does not matter whether you're checking from here or whether you're checking from here so by now you have had enough time to think now i am going to proceed on with the solution okay so let's follow the strategy which i first said what did i say initially take out as much info as you can from the question what is the question telling you the question is telling you that the rod is going at v another another thing which you can see is that this point is in contact which means you can use this point right you can use this information another information which you have is the distance of this point from the center of the uh, circle you also have the radius so these are the information which you have at hand what are they asking for they are asking for angular velocity like this was the number 2 right they are asking for the angular velocity from you now number 3 what can tie these together you have v and you want omega what is the thing that can tie these thing together omega is equal to v by r simple right so you need that r by the way this r is not that r which is shown in the diagram why why let's come back to the diagram the r shown over here is the radius of the cylinder not the radius of the arc along which the uh, rod is moving right so you can do one thing find the perpendicular velocity over here like the velocity perpendicular to this rod and then you can consider this as r because this is the point of contact this is the point about which the rotation is happening so you can consider this r so basically what you need to find is this velocity which is perpendicular to the rod and you need to find this value of r if you can find these two you can find the answer so this was step 3 in step 3 you need to realize what is going to connect step 1 and 2 step 1 and step 2 are very easy what is difficult is step 3 that you need to realize what will connect these two and you need to apply that okay so what will what would be this uh, this velocity if this is theta this has to be 90 minus theta and so this this velocity would be v cos 90 minus theta 
What is V cos 90 minus theta? V sin theta? So this is V sin theta, right? Keep this in mind. Now you need to find this length, this, this length. Notice that here is a right angle triangle. Where is the right angle triangle? Here is the right angle triangle. Why? Because tangent is always perpendicular to the radius. So if this distance is S, this distance is R, this distance obviously has to be SS square minus R square, right? So now what is our omega? We said that omega is equal to V by R. That's the step three, which we understood. Now let's manipulate that. We have found what is, what is our V? Like what is the V we need? Or let us say that as V dash. What is the V dash we need? The V dash we need is V sine theta. What is the R which we have? We have R as root over S square minus R square, right? But notice one thing, none of your options are in sine theta. None of your options are in sine theta. So what do you need to do? You need to convert theta into terms of R and S. That's what they require. So you need, need a bit of trigonometry. So what, what would be it? What is sine theta? Sine theta is perpendicular by hypotenuse. What is perpendicular R? V R, what is the hypotenuse? S, S square minus R square. You find any option common with that? Yes, option three. So that is the correct answer. Now, if you see this, this method, I think is a bit lengthy. You can solve it even in a shorter method. How? You have, you have three seconds time to think. You can pause the video. If you haven't, that's entirely your thing. Your time is up. You can solve it in another way. And that is pretty interesting. So for this method, let's go back to the uh, method which I told you initially. Step one, take out as much information as you can. What is the information which we have? S, theta, R, V. So now it's time for step three. Last time in step three, we said omega was equal to V by R. But omega is also equal to another thing which we are going to use in this method. And you will see how easy this, become, this method becomes. Omega is also equal to d, d, t, d theta by dt, right? But how are we going to apply it? Notice one thing. This is a right angle triangle. Can you relate theta, r and s? Trigonometry, think, 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 think in a trigonometrical way. So, if I say sin theta is equal to r by s, would I be wrong? Sin theta is equal to perpendicular by hypotenuse. Sin theta is equal to R by S. Now, if I differentiate both sides with respect to time, now these things like need to come very intuitionally. Like I need to go there. I need to achieve d theta by dt. So I am going to differentiate both sides with time. Because if you are going to achieve, uh, uh, differentiate this side, like this side uh, with respect to time, you're obviously going to get a d theta by dt part, right? So you can use that as omega. So these things need to click like that. So if you are going to differentiate both sides, let's see what is constant. Constant, there is only one constant that is the radius because the distance can change. Because what is the distance? The distance is the like ds by dt is the velocity. No, so distance is obvious, the s is obviously changing. So s is not constant. The only constant is radius. One thing to be remembered. So let's differentiate both sides with respect to time cos theta d theta by dt is equal to r what is the uh, differentiation of uh, 1 by x x square i think it should be minus right what's the differentiation of sin theta it's cos theta yeah but it but it's uh, actually going in the reverse direction so i think it would be plus you can take care of the sign that, uh, you, uh, that that's your problem you take care of the sign my my work is to give you the method so r by s square ds dt Right? Uh, the chain rule, like here we did d, d theta dt because we have to differentiate this and now you have to do ds dt. So now cos theta or rather let, let's just write cos theta straight off. What is cos theta? Cos theta is based by hypotenuse. So what was based? Root over s square minus r square. Root over s square minus r square based by hypotenuse. What is d theta by dt? d theta by dt, dt is omega r by s square ds by dt. What is ds by dt? We just said ds by dt is the velocity. Why? Because this is increasing. If, if this increases like the end moves away, like the rate at which the end moves is velocity. So what is the rate at which the end moves? ds by dt. So ds by dt is velocity. So now omega becomes, okay, let's cut this out. 
omega becomes r by s into root over s minus r square into v. What option do we have here? So it wasn't this method very easy. This method just made it so simple, right? Like uh, three steps on and all. You didn't have to go in for this, that component and all. So this is the thing. If you can take some seconds out to think which method can be shorter. Like the thing which I said while calculating this L also, no? Both of these methods will work for anything. Like both of these methods will work for anything and everything. But it is you who has to decide which one would be shorter at which moment. And that I think comes more with experience. And also like you will understand that. Like it, it would be a bit intuitional also. Right. So this is one method. But ne up next I have a more dangerous method. Like you are not supposed to use this for calculating. Generally you are used this to find out the possible options. How I am telling you. Notice something among the options like in this method we are going to estimate which can be the possible options so now you tell me is option 2 possible is option like can i write this as omega like till now assume that i have not calculated can i write this option as omega think your time of thinking has ended now assume that if i write this as omega what would that mean that would mean that omega is directly proportional to s so if I take a situation, for example, where S is very high, okay, it is saying that higher the S, higher would be the omega. But if that is the case, if, even if this end moves by a bit, would that affect the theta too much? The theta is at, as it is less. How much would the th uh, theta increase? So d theta by uh, dt would be very low, would be lower, right? It would not increase directly with, directly proportional with S, right? So we can get a feeling from there. So from here we can say that option 2 is not correct. Like it is not possible for option 2 to be correct because it is directly proportional to S. It's not uh, possible. Why? Because if you have a high enough distance, it's not possible for the angle to close in so fast, right? So this is a uh, bit intuitional, intuitional also. And also you need to see. So now let us look at option 4, right? Is option 4 possible? So the only way to differentiate between option 3 and option 4 is the ratio of S by R. Notice that this is the only thing which is different between option 3 and option 4. Right. The ratio of S by R. So can the ratio of S by R tell us anything? Now let us assume a scenario where S by R is very short. Okay. In this scenario, you, can, you have already seen what will happen if S by R is very large. Right. If the S is very large and R is very small. So if S by R is very large, sorry, if S by R is very small, then you have a smaller omega and if s by r is very large let us see that example that should mean that s is almost equal to r because s can obviously be never greater than r so like this scenario like this so in this case and in this case the only thing which has changed is the value of s by r so which would have higher omega, you tell me, which is more intuitive. Like if I leave a rod, which is more intuitive to slide down faster in this position or in this position. Obviously, in the first position, the rod is much more uh, like you can think that the rod is going to slide down faster. So this position is going to have a higher omega. So you can clearly say that higher the S by R value, lower would be the omega. So option four is also not possible. And uh, in this and this, you have to do some calculation like. Uh, you, if you think some more time, you can also probably find a logic for this. But this is a method of cross checking. Like try not to use this as a first method. But if you see that your time is less, then use this as the first method. This will save you a lot of time by just realizing uh, by putting values and simulating what the options can be. And that will just cancel. Some options will just cancel out and that will make your work much, much easier. So this is another tip, uh, tip which I had to give. Now going on to the next question. So this was the second episode of the series. The next episode will be also coming out on my channel. In that video, I'll be solving yet another sound rotational mechanics so that you can be habituated with how to apply those three steps which I already said. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have liked it really much, you can consider sharing this video with your friends. And as always, keep commenting.